Without exception, Christmas is the biggest holiday of the year. It has been this way for years. A day filled with passed down traditions or special Christmas items from generation to generation. Items that held the spirit of the season for a grandparent or great-grandparent that was lovingly passed down. A special story passed down with the item from one generation to the next. Traditions that could include eating at grandma's house or maybe going Christmas caroling or serving in a soup kitchen, wrapping presents together, or just being together for Christmas morning, reading the Christmas story by the fire, movies, songs, eggnog, snow, special ornaments, baking Christmas treats, and so on. Every family, to one degree or another, has these traditions that make the season special. They all stem from and point back to that one special day, Christmas. Those time-tested and honored traditions make Christmas time like no other time of year, a time where there's no place to be like home. Of course, with such a big day, there can also be stresses and pressures that we have added to such a magnificent event. We worry because we care. We earnestly desire to make the day as special as the memories are in all of our heads. We want to make sure the gift is perfect. The tree and decorations are perfect. That the people that are special to us feel special. And sadly, we ourselves sometimes put expectations on the ones we care the most for. So what's the point? I'm so excited for this. If you don't like it, I'll be mad. But I know you will. We all have seen the Charlie Brown Christmas special where Chuck struggles with just those types of stresses. His desire is to make things just right. To help make things perfect for everyone. He gets caught up in the hustle and bustle of the season. Loses sight of what it's all about. Christmas is the day we remember the birth of Jesus. Who is the Christ. It is the day we celebrate the coming of a very special baby. Jesus was and is the Son of God. I guess you were right, Linus. I shouldn't have picked this little tree. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? This past week, I went to social media to ask my friends a few questions to bring a little more proper perspective to the holidays. You know, to help keep people thinking about the special memories and joys of the seasons and not so much the stresses that come along with this time. I asked them, and a few people I came in contact with out and about, if you could have or receive any one thing for Christmas, what would it be? The answers obviously were all across the board. From a new car to replace the dump I'm driving, to a puppy, to a billion dollars. But I heard from a new mother. She just wanted her husband home for the holidays. You see, he is currently serving overseas in the Army and won't be home to see his newborn son until May. One twenty-something said she just wanted her family to be together. I asked her big picture. Does that mean cousins, uncles, grandparents? What'd she mean? She said it appeared that this would be only the second year in her life that her brother would not be home for Christmas. I have a couple of friends that have recently lost their wives. My sister, as many of you know, has recently lost her oldest son. While it seems that some people will always be thinking of the gift or the items they might be able to receive, I've found that the older and seemingly more mature you become, the more you learn that the things that you get from year to year will never equal the time you have with the ones you love. Sometimes that's family, sometimes friends, maybe your youth group, maybe your swim team. Whatever the desire of your heart, it seems that the holidays bring out those closest to our hearts. What's the point? Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. The glory of the Lord shall round about them. And they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. 
You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a an manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. John 3.16, that very popular verse, says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only Son, that whomever would believe in him might be saved. Saved from what, you might ask? Saved from hell. You see, the one true God, maker of the heaven and earth and hell, wants everyone to make it to heaven. But he is holy. Holy means perfect and set apart. In order for us to enter into his presence, heaven, we must also be perfect. In this case, the greatest deterrent from our perfection is our sin. You see, sin is the things that we do that go against what God wants us to do and the things that he has said specifically not to do. If we are not able to stand before the creator and perfecter of all things on our own and be viewed as without sin, then without some way to remove our sin from us, we are doomed to hell. This is where a lot of people ask, if he were such a loving God, why would he allow that to happen? Why would he do that? I remember when I read John 3.16, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's King James Version, by the way. John 3.17 says something as well. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world may be saved. See, God gives us free choice. He gives us the opportunity but ultimately, it's our decision, and our decisions have consequences. I thought we were talking about Christmas. We are. The birth of Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, was the plan designed by God to afford us the opportunity to avoid hell. Christmas is a celebration of the birth of the Savior for the world. He was brought to the world to be the payment for the sins of the world. He was born of a virgin, having God as his father, lived a perfect life free of any type of sin or wrongdoing, and then voluntarily laid down his life for us by dying on a cross. We celebrate Christmas as a reminder of the gift that God gave to his people. The season is intended to be wholly a reminder of Jesus who was born to die, that through his sacrificial gift of his life, any who might choose to follow him, to lay down his own life, to follow Jesus as not only Savior, but also Lord, might receive the gift of eternal life. You see, the first gift was perfect. It was for all mankind and was given by the giver of all good gifts, our Heavenly Father. Because He loved us enough to allow us to see that we needed a Savior, and then He sent Him to us. Born in a manger, in a barn, He was the fulfillment of 353 prophecies written hundreds of years before His birth, all pointing to Him, all fulfilled through His life and summarized at the cross. When people say Jesus is the reason for the season, they are correct. He was the gift given from our Heavenly Father to us. All that is left is for us to receive it. May you all have a very Merry Christmas. Enjoy the holidays with your family and your friends. But let's just remember that the gift we have is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Merry Christmas, everybody. From Nate Dad. Bye. What y'all think of my new hat? My daughter got me this for Christmas. It's kind of cool, huh? Nate Dad! <laughs>